Hi everyone! Welcome to this week's episode of Fridays with a Ranger. I'm Ranger Shannon with Lewis and Clark National Store Trail and thanks for joining me. Now I'm back again at my kitchen table. However, I have a few fun surprises today. The first surprise is that I have a special guest joining me. Please say hello to my pet hamster, Fig. She's wearing her little ranger hat and tie because she's actually an honorary ranger today, so you can call her Ranger Fig. Fig's a member of the rodent family, and the reason she's here is because we're going to be talking about another special animal in the rodent family, and she wanted to help. Thanks so much for helping out today, Fig. She'll be joining us again later in the video to talk more. I also have some fun new friends surrounding me on the walls behind me. Now these friends happen to be some of my favorite critters on the planet and they also are the topic of today's video. So today we're going to be learning about prairie dogs. Shown on the screen is a photo of five prairie dogs standing above their burrow in a field. Prairie dogs have four front teeth, two on the top and two on the bottom, that they use to gnaw their foods with, much like big ear. They're herbivores, meaning they eat plants, such as grasses and seeds, although they do eat insects sometimes. A fun fact about prairie dogs is they don't need to live near water to survive. They stay hydrated by absorbing the water from the grasses that they eat. There are five species of prairie dogs. Black-tailed prairie dogs, white-tailed prairie dogs, Gunnison's prairie dogs, Utah prairie dogs, and Mexican prairie dogs, which are native to Mexico and not the United States. Shown on the screen are the first four species of prairie dogs. Prairie dogs spend almost all their time underground in their burrows. They make their burrows by digging a tunnel system deep underground with two entrances to go outside. Their tunnels have different chambers where they can sleep and store food. They make the entrances to the tunnels cone-shaped by hammering the ground with their noses. This is so rainwater can't get inside their burrows and so they have a spot to keep watch for predators. Prairie dogs live together in large groups inside these burrows, which is why they're often called towns. Shown on the screen is the background of my kitchen, which illustrates what prairie dog burrows look like. Prairie dogs are about the size of a common ground squirrel. Shown on the screen are photos of a western gray squirrel and black-tailed prairie dog next to one another. This is why when Captain Lewis, Captain Clark, and the other members of the Corps of Discovery first encountered prairie dogs at Old Baldy, right here in Nebraska, on September 7, 1804, they called them barking squirrels, or the burrowing squirrels of the prairie. They were fascinated by these noisy little creatures and wanted to bring one back to President Thomas Jefferson. Shown on the screen is an animation illustrating what the first encounter between the Corps of Discovery and a prairie dog might have been like. One of the goals of the Lewis and Clark expedition was to not only document new plants and animals that they discovered along the journey, but to also bring back live specimens for President Thomas Jefferson. And since none of them had ever seen a prairie dog before, they knew it was the perfect animal to bring back in the name of science and discovery. However, catching one of these critters was not an easy task. Members of the towns keep watch over their territory, so if a predator is on the prowl, they alert each other by jump yipping, as shown in the photo on the screen. When they jump yip, they throw their head and arms back and forth while letting out a little chirp. Now, they don't just jump yip when they're in danger, they also jump yip when it's safe, when they're meeting new prairie dogs, or if they're just surprised. To lure a prairie dog out, the crew decided to dump water down one of the entrances of a burrow. However, they didn't realize what an enormous task they were taking on. Prairie dogs dig their burrows very deep into the ground, around 7 feet to 15 feet. That's about the size of an elephant. It took five buckets of water to finally flood the burrow enough that it forced a prairie dog out. Shown on the screen is an illustration of three crew members dumping water down a burrow as two prairie dogs watch. That poor prairie dog. Right, Fig? The captured critter traveled with the expedition all the way to Fort Mandan in North Dakota. Spent the winter of 1804 to 1805 there with the crew until it was sent on its way to President Jefferson. The prairie dog traveled down the Mississippi River 
sailed to Baltimore, Maryland, lived with the president for a short time, was sent to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania as a live attraction at a museum, where it spent the remainder of its life. Shown on the screen is an animation illustrating the journey that the prairie dog might have taken. What are some ways that your town relates to a prairie dog town? Comment on our Facebook or Instagram page and let us know what you think. So Ranger Fig, did you enjoy learning about prairie dogs? I sure did. If you want to learn more about prairie dogs, check out the links in the description box below. Also, if you want to color your very own prairie dog, please check out our Color the Trail page, which is also linked in the description box below. Here's my completed page. And this is one that's not completed. This is Figs. I'm going to help her with it later. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's video. Again, I'm Ranger Shannon with Lewis and Clark National Store Trail, and this is Ranger Fig. I hope you're all staying safe, and please tune in next week for another episode of Fridays with the Ranger. Bye!